Hey folks, Matt from ArtOfTheImage.com. Exciting day here at Art of the Image because uh, as you can see, I'm already into the unboxing. Reason I didn't wait for you guys to get it unboxed is I wanted to charge the battery. This is the Sony RX100 Mark 6 V16. Had to think about that for a minute because I was looking at it and I had to remember that the VA, which is newly announced, I didn't get the VA in yet. I don't even think that's available yet. But this is the Mark 6. Um, most of the RX 100s, you plug in through the um, through the side there, and that's how you get your power charging it. So that's what I had to do to put the battery in the bottom there. Let's close that little uh, little flap there. Click it, click it shut over the uh, the hookup enclosure. So I put a battery in. These take the um, NPBX ones. That's where the battery goes in the bottom right there, and. Um, also, that little compartment is where the uh, SD card goes. So what else did we get in here? came in a nice little cloth-style case. We got our uh, paperwork, our warranty, our manual, the battery. Uh, we got a little um, wrist cord, strap, I guess that's what you call that. I don't even use them, so I don't even think about what the name is. Um, what do we have in here? These look like these are for uh, a camera strap or something similar goes on the side for the the, the uh, to put the camera on um, don't use those either that's why I'm uh, stumbling over what they you call them officially so that's what is in the box plus the uh, the USB cord and then the uh, the wall wart the wall plug for plugging it in now the big thing on this camera is we have 20 megapixels but we have a 24 I'm just I'm reading this here to make sure I don't tell you the wrong thing. 24 to 200, because this is the big difference uh, in the RX100 Mark VI uh, versus the 5, and also why they brought out the 5A, because they gave us that faster uh, lens back on the 5A, whereas the 6, we got rid of the faster lens, because we are into a 2.8 to 4.5, so still relatively fast, but not as fast as the uh, 1.8 lens on the uh, 5 or the 5A, but we get a longer lens. We get a 24 to 200. What, else, what does this also say on here for spec-wise? So we've got the um, we've got the one inch, 20 megapixel sensor. And, and for those of you that don't know, for those of you that think these little pocket cameras are a joke, uh, because back in the day, they kind of were, um, they aren't anymore. The one inch sensor in here is pretty amazing. I've said it before and I'll say it again here, the one inch sensors of today are performing uh, above the level of APS-C sensors uh, or DX sensors if you're Nikon, you know, 1.5, 1.6 crop sensors um, of yesteryear. Arguably, I wouldn't say they're performing above the original full frame unless you're looking at something like the very, very first ones like the Kodaks or something. Um, I would say that an original Canon 5D will still outshoot this, although it might be close. Plus, you get more resolution. So very, very impressive image quality from a little tiny camera that truly fits in your pocket. And not only that, now we have a 200mm uh, lens on here. So um, still relatively fast, but it gives us, you know, maybe perhaps for those of you that want to travel, this camera is the, the way to go. Now, it's wanting me to set it up quick here. Here comes the lens turned on now. We've powered it up. I just had to do a couple initial setups. I think I still have to go back and do the date and time. But uh, let's see. Here's the lens fully extended for its 200 millimeter reach. So not, not bad. It's pretty, still pretty compact, actually. Amazing for 200 mils. And then shrunk in at 24, that's it all the way in. So it still protrudes, actually, a fair bit at 24, but that would be probably just the mechanics of having a lens that goes from 24 to 200 like this in your pocket, which is fantastic. The other thing I really, really like about this camera is it's got a flip-up LCD. So um, selfies, for those of you that like doing that, I'm not really a selfie person, but I do like to shoot the odd vlog or just show you guys where I'm at, a little quick video clip if I'm talking about something. This is fantastic. And Sony's autofocus system on this is... Um, Pretty much the same as having Canon dual pixel autofocus, DPAF. So fantastic little camera for doing vlogging. If you want a vlogging camera and an all-around travel camera, video camera, amazing. Now, I just shut it down. I'm just looking to see how long it takes to close. There we go. So that is it closed down. Very small. We got a very nice, smooth um, 
dial on here for autofocus. You can override the autofocus, uh, which is very nice. Do it manually. We do have a, let me see if I can get that to pop up. Where's our, there we go. Pop up a uh, little flash on there. Not something you're going to use a lot. I certainly wouldn't use it direct. I just take my finger and aim it up or angle it so that you're bouncing it, make it a bounce flash. Um, but also handy if you hold it back, I have used it in these situations or put a little little tiny bounce card on it, use it as a controller for an optically slaved off-camera flash. In other words, now you're turning this into like almost like a professional setup uh, where you know lighting is everything. So if you do some really good lighting with this fantastic little one-inch sensor and you use this as a optical controller, you could uh, you could arguably do some some amazing work that um, you might be really surprised came from a little pocket camera like this. So really nice little camera. Um, the build quality on here is fantastic. I have no um, complaints about that. Very very nice. I'd still like to see a. I don't mind the flip up screen. I have to say, but I would like to see a very angle. Perhaps that would change um, the ability for it to be so small. Uh, so this does 4K. We've got the longer, uh, slower zoom on it. Excited to get out and shoot with it. I mean, a camera that I can just throw in my pocket when I'm going somewhere like this. It's essentially why I love the RX100 to begin with, with the faster lens, um, and why I love the LX10 as well from Panasonic, and also why I love a camera like the ZS100 from Panasonic, which is a good travel zoom, the longer zoom. So you're almost getting the best of both worlds, although I, I'm wondering if I'm going to miss the faster lens. So we'll have to discuss that and talk to you about it. One thing to note here, as you can, I'm brought up, I have a, a, a second Sony battery in from B&H. This is all in on loan from B&H for review. Thank you very much, B&H. So second Sony battery here and a uh, Watson battery so a non-oem battery so i've got two extra batteries because these are tiny little batteries and if i do get into shooting some video if i'm just shooting photography it's not too bad start to get into some video and you're going to start to burn up your batteries so now i got two spares when i'm out and about um, the only thing is i'm not even sure if i, I might have an aftermarket charger for these i'm gonna to have to check because i'm probably gonna to have to use the camera to charge both of them which is kind of a pain in the butt uh, but anyways um, if you have any questions on the arx 100 mark 6 let me know in the comments below i'm going to be out shooting with it taking it with me just letting you know how it works doing some vlogging with it do some video with it um, just see what i think because uh, currently my favorite in this category is an LX10. It's got the fast lens. It's at a better price. The RX100 Mark V would be second to that um, just because it's more expensive. However, it also probably does vlogging better because it's closer to the Canon Dual Pixel AF system. So this should have the same. Be testing that out too. So if you have any questions, let me know. And uh, if you have any feedback, if you have this camera already and you want to give me some tips or your thoughts on it, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at artoftheimage.com.